Well, it seems we're back on these little SK6812s. Um, after the failed board experiment with this thing, and uh, also uh, setting them up on one of these, I can't find the one that actually worked of this. Uh, I tested the current. Oh no, here it is. <laughs> Um, I was testing the current with this thing. A bit uh, difficult to see. There we go. I was testing the current on this one. And that was great. It was working really well. But I wanted to sort of scale that up a bit. So I went off and got a couple of boards printed. I say a couple. I got uh, three. I've lost some. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to be soldering these on and then we're going to look at the current. Um, for these at different uh, brightnesses, just so we can get an idea of what our 16 by 16 display is really going to use. Now, I know what the maximum it would take is, so 16 milliamps per LED is something like 18 amps, but um, I won't be running it at that, so I just want to get a good idea. Um, I'm also going to be using these for uh, a little night light thing. I know it sounds like I'm copying Sion here uh, from The Unexpected Maker, but uh, I picked up this Orky light. Um, let me go and grab it. So I picked up this Orky light a while back. Let's zoom out here. Um, and I did a little video on it. And it's a nice light. It's got uh, the ability to turn it off with a tap. All oh, the battery's running low. But also, it's got different modes. Those are color changing. Hang on. So kind of a blue, while well, the battery's dying, so that's a good experiment, isn't it? <laughs> Anyhow. So that was sort of the secondary aim. So I'm gonna try and do that at some point. But we're just gonna solder these in and then we'll test the current. I'll use a power supply and a multimeter because uh, I know my multimeter's got a certain amount of burden voltage. And when you're sort of racking up uh, the, the amps, or that burden voltage really comes into play. So you could be reading significantly down. So we'll, um, we'll try and sort of figure it out. We, it's only gonna be rough, really. I just need to have a good ballpark figure for what 10% brightness would be, roughly. I don't, know whether, I don't think it's linear, that's the thing. LEDs, in my experience, aren't a linear increase in current. So these ones here, these are tiny little straw hat LEDs. Now, they can take something like 500, is it microamps? And still output uh, some brightness. I use them in that solar thing that's in my, uh, in my window right now, which is just uh, two AA batteries running about 12 LEDs. So let's get these soldered on. So incidentally, um, it's not even incidental. It's not even, it's not remotely related to what I'm doing here, however, there was a, uh, a live stream that I did the other day. It's a bit off the cuff. I hadn't really planned it. Um, and in it, I was trying to fix the blooming crack clock from ages ago. And uh, that's a bit dirty. And I had a bit of a bit of an issue with uh, the buttons not working correctly. And it's because I hadn't, no, I don't want to heat it up too long. Uh, it's because I hadn't actually routed them to the board. So <laughs> I've had to put yet more bodge wires onto this one, which is very frustrating. So by, we, by not routing them to the board, what I mean is that uh, I hadn't, I'd routed them on the board. So, you know, the switches were connected to all of the passive components. However, they didn't make it to the pin. <laughs> they made it to test pads. And because I didn't see any air wires on my board, I just thought, oh, I must have done it right. I didn't double check. I got overly excited and sent it off. So next time I will make sure I do it properly. but it would be nice to be finally rid of that damn project. They look okay. Oh God, I haven't done that whole row. 
<laughs> I thought I'd finished with it. So right at the edge, it's very hard to do that. I'm just gonna, it's just the angle that I'm soldering. I'm just gonna put a bit of flux on there. These are probably not very waterproof LEDs, so maybe it's not a good idea to use so much flux. So you don't wanna to linger too long on, on these pins because you can heat up the gold bond wires that I'll zoom into, uh, zoom into and show you. Um, also, I should really be moving this board around because I cannot see where my iron is there. But in the interest of making this more interesting for YouTube, I'm not gonna sling the board around too much. So I'll just hope that I get these pins. Before I put the, actually, I'm not even gonna bother putting capacitors on for now. I'll let you uh, inspect it. Oh, that's as close as it's gonna get. So that's the, uh, the state of my soldering, as it were. Not bad and didn't take too long, so that's good. It took under 20 minutes. So now we've done that one, we can move on to the one with these LEDs. So these are the white, white, white LEDs, essentially. Um, I still cannot find the, uh, I don't know where they are. I can't find the 5050 versions of these 3535 ones, which are the black SK6812 RGB normal ones. So I can't find them, unfortunately. So we'll be using these instead. All right, I will come back when we're ready to test. So I'm going to talk you through my testing methodology. I'm not exactly NASA, so it won't be a surprise to anybody that this isn't going to be entirely scientific. However, it will give me an idea as to what's going on. So I've got uh, my lovely Tenma power supply, I'm going to be kicking out five volts. That's going into a 1000 microfarad capacitor just to give it a bit of um, stability. Um, we're going to be mounting the, the uh, little LED panels inside this kind of vice thing. I've got my panels here. So the one that's currently on here is the warm white one. So it's white, 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 and this one's the RGB white. Um, and I'm mounting them just above one of these little lux meters. Now, um, LEDs don't really measure very well um, with lux, certainly not the RGB ones, because it just sort of responds to uh, light in a different way. However, it should respond to blue light the same way and the green light the same way. So uh, we'll be able to get a gauge of the change um, based on how much current we're putting into it. So the constant current drivers in these things, they essentially will have an eight bit thing. So zero to 255. And I'd like to read what the lux change is or the apparent brightness as you go up that scale and see if there are any sort of uh, advantages to having it at a, like 30% or whatever, as opposed to 50, where you might not have as many gains. I want to see what um, what's really sort of going on and see if I can recommend um, a certain level to myself and know I'm getting the most brightness for uh, the least cost in current, essentially. So anyway, my setup is that I have my Arduino here uh, connected to the the board and um, I have a button that just increases the brightness each time. Hopefully you can see that, I can. Um, so every time that happens, I will press the button and get a new reading. So currently 70, press it again, 80, and again, 86. And once more, 100. So I'm gonna do that for every one of the colors and then the colors together um, and I'll repeat it twice I think just if I feel like there's any kind of weird results going on. It's not meant to be scientific, it's just meant to be a bit of fun. Uh, I'm also going to be using my multimeter, my Unity 61E which will connect through to my computer. Now I could demo that here if I just uh, sort of focus on to the screen a bit. It's going to go a bit funny, isn't it? But um, if I click on go, we should see some values pop up on our screen. So this is our um, graph essentially. So I can just increase that current draw 
not by an awful lot with these tiny steps, but you can see the graph changing. So I'm going to be recording that for each one of the steps and then that will form another graph. So current and then we'll have it versus the light intensity. So uh, there are a few bits I haven't mentioned actually. One of them is um, it could be entirely linear. <laughs> it could be because you've got the you've got the current essentially that's going to be sort of linear. I don't know how much really it's going to be linear, but um, it's using, I guess it's PWM, it's current and current driver. It's eight bits, so zero to 255. Maybe it is completely linear, the current draw. However, I don't know, but we'll test it. The other thing is maybe the luminosity is linear as well. Uh, um, I don't know. We'll find that out as well. I couldn't find a data sheet with all this kind of information. So um, I also searched the web and no one seemed to know that kind of an answer. So we're going to look and find out for ourselves. The other thing um, is I'm aware there is a burden voltage associated with my multimeter when it's in the current reading mode. Now I'll find out what that is. I don't think it's an awful lot, especially in the 10 amps range, which is what I'm using. So the accuracy in the lower amps, uh, lower sort of milliamps isn't going to be that great, but uh, it should be perfectly fine. Uh, so I'll investigate what that is um, for my multimeter specifically, and I'll try and adjust for that. If not, I'll up the voltage to accommodate it. All right, this may take a couple of days. So the video is already pretty long because I stuck that soldering bit in because I love doing that. So um, I will catch you in the next one where I will expose the results. Probably not too exciting. Hope. I mean, fingers crossed, it's going to be a revelation, but I imagine it may just be me proving that it is pretty linear. Who knows?